Yeah, good morning, or very good morning to everyone. Uh, we are from Group 6. Uh, we will present to you about aircraft communication and navigation principle. Uh, my name is Muhammad Mas Daniel bin Muhammad Shari. I will present to you about fundamental of radio transmitter. So what is transmitter? Um, so basically, a transmitter or radio transmitter is an electronic device uh, which produces radio wave with an antenna. The transmitter itself generates a radio frequency alternating current which is applied to the antenna. When excited, when excited by this alternating current, the antenna radiates radio wave. So basically, uh, this transmitter uh, may be considered as a generator which changes electrical power into radio wave. So how uh, the transmitter works? Uh, the purpose of most transmitter is a radio communication of information over a distance. The information is provided to the transmitter in the form of an electronic signal, such as an uh, audio signal from a microphone, a video TV signal from a video camera, or in wireless wireless uh, networking device, or digital signal from a computer. Uh, the transmitter also combines the information signal to be carried with the radio frequency signal which uh, generates the radio wave uh, which is called the carrier signal. The process is called modulation. Uh, in the next slide, I will explain to you what is uh, modulation and a modulator. Uh, the information can be added uh, to the carrier in several different ways, in different types of transmitter. In an amplitude modulation AM transmitter, uh, the information is added to the radio signal by varying its amplitude. In N frequency modulation, or we call it as FM transmitter, it is added by varying uh, the radio signal frequency slightly. Many other types of modulation are also used. And lastly, the radio signal from the transmitter is applied to the antenna which uh, radiates the energy as radio wave. So basically, transmitter uh, have uh, two types, uh, which is amplitude modulation, or we call as AM. One more is uh, frequency modulation, we call it as FM. <coughs> so what is amplitude modulation? Amplitude modulation is a modulation technique used in electronic communication, most commonly for transmitting information via a radio carrier wave. Frequency modulation, uh, or we call FM. FM is, is the encoding of information in a carrier wave by varying the instantaneous frequency of the wave. Of the wave. So what is the... Uh, we call what is the difference of of AM and FM. In AM, a radio wave known as the carrier or carrier wave is is modulated in in amplitude by the signal that is to be transmitted. The frequency and phase remain the same. In FM, a radio wave known as the carrier or carrier wave is modulated in frequency by the signal that is to be transmitted. The amplitude and phase remain the same. So basically, AM uh, is modulated in amplitude and uh, FM is modulated in frequency. So the frequency of uh, the amplitude modulation or AM radio range from 535 to 1000 705 kilohertz or up to 1200 uh, bits per second and for frequency modulation FM radio range in a uh, higher spectrum from 88 to 108 uh, mhz or 1200 to 4 to 2400 bits per second and AM and FM also has a uh, advantage and disadvantage uh, itself uh, uh, like AM 
uh, the the advantage of AM it has pure poor sound quality compared with FM, but it's cheaper and can be transmitted over long distance. And AM also has a lower bandwidth, so it can have more stations available in any frequency range. Easy to detect with simple equipment, and even uh, if the signal is not very strong. And the major disadvantage of AM is that the signal is affected by electrical storm and other radio frequencies interference. For FM, FM is less prone to interference than AM. However, FM signals are impacted by physical barriers. The advantage of FM is it has a better sound quality due to higher bandwidth. And the advantage of FM signal is that it is more local and cannot be transmitted over the long distance. It may take more FM radio stations to cover a large area. And FM also, the advantage is uh, FM requires a fairly more complicated receiver and transmitter than an AM signal does. And for the complexity, a transmitter and receiver uh, for AM transmitter and receiver are simple, but synchronization is needed in case of SS, PSC, AM carrier. And for the FM, transmitter and receiver are more complex. Aspiration of modulation signal has to be reconverted and detect uh, from corresponding variation in frequencies. This means uh, voltage to frequency and frequency to voltage conversion has to be done. And for noise, actually AM is more susceptible to noise because uh, noise of pair amplitude, uh, which is where information is stored in an AM signal. And for the FM, FM is less susceptible to noise because information in an FM signal be, is transmitted through varying the frequencies and not the amplitude. So, in transmitter, uh, uh, we we have some components in transmitter like oscillator circuit to generate RF signal and amplifier circuit to increase the output of the oscillator to the required power level. And lastly, modulator, uh, the function of modulator is to add voice or audio intelligence to the RF signal. Modulation can be further done to in two ways, amplitude modulation AM and frequency modulation FM, like I said before. So now uh, what is uh, RF modulator? An RF modulator, or we call it, uh, the real name is radio frequency modulator, is an electronic device whose input is a baseband signal, which is used to modulate a radio frequency source. RF modulators are used to convert signal from device uh, such as uh, media player, VCRs, and games console to a format that can be handled by a device designed to receive a modulate RF input, such as a radio or television receiver. And local oscillator. Local oscillator in electronics, a local is Oscillator is an electronic oscillator used with a mixer to change the frequency of a signal. This frequency conversion process, also called heterodyning, uh, produced some of and different frequencies from the frequencies of the local oscillator and frequency of the put signal, input signal. Pro oscillator also processing a signal at a fixed frequency with a radio receiver improved to improve uh, performance. And in many receiver, the functions of local oscillator and mixer is combined in one stage called a converter. Um, that's all for me now. I will uh, give this presentation to uh, Shafi. Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Mohamed Shafi Hazan from 4AM3. I'd like to present about fundamental of radio receiver. Uh, 
uh, firstly I would like to present about the receiver and then transceiver so we proceed to the to the next page what is a receiver a receiver is a device of or apparatus that receive electrical signal wave or the light and render them perceptible to the sense antennas are simply conductors of length proportional to the wavelength of the oscillated frequency put up by the transmitter an antenna captures the desired carrier wave as well as many other radio waves that are present in the atmosphere a receiver is needed to isolate the desired carrier wave with its information the receiver also has circuitry to separate the information signal from the carrier wave it prepares it for output to a device such as speaker or a display screen the output is the information signal originally introduced into transmitter okay type of receiver there are this uh, is a type of receiver super heterogeneous receiver it is a common receiver so how super heterogeneous receiver work as as with any receiver it must amplify the desired radio frequency captured by antenna since it is weak from traveling through the atmosphere and oscillator in the receiver is used to compare and select the desired frequency out of all the frequency up by the antenna. The undesired frequencies are sent to ground. A local oscillator in the receiver produces a frequency that is different than the radio frequency of the carrier wave. These two frequencies are mixed in the mixer for frequencies result from this mixing. They are the radio frequency, local oscillator frequency and the sum and different of these two frequencies. The sum and different frequency contain the information signal. The frequency that is different between the local oscillator frequency and the radio frequency carrier wave frequency is used during the remaining process. Application In VHF aircraft communication radio, this frequency is 10.8 MHz. Called the intermediate frequency, it is amplified before it is sent to the detector. The detector or demolator is where the information signal is separated from the carrier wave portion of the signal. In, in AM, since both sidebands contain the useful information, the signal is rectified leaving just one sideband with a weak version of the original transmitter input signal. In FM receivers, the varying frequency is changed to a varying amplitude signal at this point. Finally, application of proof for the output device over the year with the development of transistor micro transistor and integrated circuit radio transmitter and receiver have become smaller electronic base were established on older aircraft as remote application to mount radio devices simply because they would not fit in the fact that today many avionic devices are small enough to be mount to be mounted in the instrument panel which is customary on most flight aircraft because of the number of communication and navigation aid as well as the need to present an uncluttered interface to the pilot most complicated aircraft return an area away from the flight deck for the mounting of average the control head of this unit remains on the flight deck so the, this is the basic stations in the in the receiver to produce an output from a radio wave it comes from antenna go to the radio frequency amplifier and go to mixer so local oscillator and mixer will, uh, will separate the signal and frequency and then go to the intermediate frequency amplifier and then go to the detector demodulator and go to the the yeah. audio frequency amplifier and and then out, this is this will produce an output from a radio wave so this is a transceiver a transceiver is a communication radio that transmit and receive this is a, the transceiver will will do two 
to work at the same time. The same frequency is used for voice when transmitting, the receiver does not function. When push to talk, which block the receiving circuitry and allow the transmitter circuitry to be active in an in a transceiver, some of the circuitry is shared by the transmitting and receiving function of the device. So it is the antenna, its space, and the number of components used. So transceiver are half the plex system where communication can occur in both direction, but only one party can speak while the other must listen. VHF aircraft communication radio are usually transmit transceiver. So this is an example of VHF aircraft communication transceiver. This is a, like your walkie-talkie. So the button you push to talk, and when you release, you will receive. So when you push, you you will transmit, and when you release, the receiver circuitry will, will be on. So like that. Uh. So that's all for me. Thank you, thank you for the for the focus. I would like to give this present to the videos. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat berpuasa. Okay, I would like to present about aircraft communication system. Okay, I hope you all pay attention to my presentation because it were it is a short presentation. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Okay, as you can see on the screen, this is basic the basic radio principle that used for the aircraft, and you can see the generator, primary circuit, switch, iron core, alternating electromagnetic field, secondary circuit, and lamp. This is a basic radio principle. I hope you can understand it. So, going to the next. Okay, basic radio principle. The energy that illuminates the light is transmitted by an alternating electromagnetic field in the core of transformer. It is a kind of wireless control of one circuit secondary by another circuit primary. So basically, uh, it's, it is controlled from the secondary circuit by another circuit. So the primary is the organizer of the circuit. Okay, next, a basic radio communication works on similar transformer principle which involves transmission and reception of electromagnetic radio waves through space. Alternating current passing through a conductor creates electromagnetic field around the conductor. Energy is alternately stored in this field and returned to the conductor for typical transformer operation. As the frequency of the current alternation increases, laser energy stored in the field returns to the conductor and instead radiated into space in form of EM wave. Now for the radio. This phenomenon is exploited for transmission of signals and the, and the conductor employed to radiate in this manner is called transmissing antenna. Now, if this radiated EM electromagnetic waves passes through a conductor, they transmit some energy into the conductor by setting the conductor electron into motion. As when electromagnetic field varies, patterns of electron flow changes which is turn varies and current generated. Hence, by causing a variation into the EM field via radiating antenna, we can bring about similar variation in the receiving antenna. Okay, this is ba the basic theory of radio transmission graphic. As you can see, from the microphone, it transmit to transmitting antenna to receiving antenna and go to the receiver 
to the uh, and it uh, the sound uh, the wave uh, goes to either headset or loudspeaker. Okay, this is high frequency communication system or HF communication system. Okay, it supplies voice communication over long distance. Next point is gives communication between airplanes or between ground stations and airplanes. Frequency range of 2 megahertz to 29.999 megahertz one kilohertz, uh, with 1 kilohertz spacing. The system uses the surface of the earth and an ionized layer to cause a reflection uh, of the communication signal. The distance between skips changes due to the time of the day, radio frequency and a plane altitude. Okay, this is the this is the the example from the ground station to the ground wave uh, and it goes to a UNS layer and goes down to sky wave and it skip and goes to ground station back so the com the com the information goes like that okay uh, this is uh, the the step of the tra trans transmission of the radio uh, from from the headphones go to trans receiver control unit ATU or antenna coupler and it goes back backward to receive the information okay this is the high frequency control unit so uh, you can they got they are from the first uh, on the left side is Select control in the middle, frequency counter indicator, 1 kilohertz. Uh, on the right is select control also. And the bottom left side is function to select control of, of USB M data. Uh, and the middle, in the bottom middle is select control also from 100, uh, 100 kilohertz. And next is for 10, 10 kilohertz. And Jump to the next slide is HF trunk receiver. Okay, take a look at it. And it goes to the next slide. We will explain the function. Oh, okay, the number one is RT fault lamp. Okay, let's see. Okay, the number one on the top left side. Okay, red. Uh, so the function is red LED lights for the following RT faults frequency scene. Frequency synthesizer of out of lock, low transmitter power output, 60 watts nominal threshold in NME, transmit mode, low power supply voltage. Okay, next, the number two is in the, in the middle, in the left side. Uh, red LED lights when 6 to 8T dash 3 slice 3A is key if a fall is this in internal coupler 6 to 8T dash 3 slash 3, 3A cannot transmit during this time so the number 3 in the bottom left uh, when pressed the RT4 and key interlock lamp slide and receiver squash is disabled okay number 4 is phone jack okay the phone jack the phone jack receptacle, receptacle for headphone jack Okay, the mic jack is receptacle for microphone jack. Number six in the in the bottom bottom right corner, uh, root select uh, is a squelch dash RF sense switch. Roots selected function from seven one four dash to six two O T to eighty dash three slice three A and grounds the other functions. The number seven is the second bottom. Uh, right side is auxiliary RCVR antenna. Receptacle for auxiliary receiver antenna cable is dual antenna installation. Dual, dual antenna installation. Okay, number eight in the top, number two at the right side. Antenna select selector switch uh, nine 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 W dash three only. 
selects antenna receptacle to be used in installation. Okay, and the last thing, the number nine at the top right side is receptacle for uh, is antenna connector, and the function is receptacle for transmit antenna cable in dual 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 antenna installation and for both transmit and receive ca receive cable in single antenna installation. Okay, next is VHF or very high frequency communication system. It supplies communication over line of sight distance. Communications between airplanes or between ground station and airplanes. Okay, as you can see, a, from the antenna, from the ground station, uh, it shoot to one of the airplane to another airplane. So uh, it will communicate to avoid uh, mid-air collision. Okay, to the next page. Okay, as you can see, it's a very simple. It's from from the headphone to the receiver and the control unit was together to the to the com to communicate uh, from the airplane to ground station and to receive it back uh, is vice versa. Okay, next. Okay, the control unit VHF control unit. Okay, you can see the frequency display VHF. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Technical problem. Okay. Uh, we have frequency selector uh, from the large knob and we have frequency selector the, the swing knob. And in the, the switch test button. Sorry technical problem next okay this is the transceiver okay active frequency frequency transfer switch offset tuning light standby frequency indicator common VHF counter switch frequency selector gain VHF radio tuning switches AR switch HF radio tuning switch HF sensitivity control or switch active frequency indicator. Okay, uh, VHF trans transceiver. Okay, this is the type of VHF transceiver. Okay, this. Okay, you can see the, the callings. Uh, LRU, LRU LED, I'm sorry, control LED, uh, antenna LED, test switch. STC, mic, mic jack, uh, phone jack, okay, you can see all of it, the transfer receiver. Okay, the VHF antenna, okay. VHF2 antenna, VHF1 antenna, and VHF3 antenna, this is simple. Okay, next, okay, there is a detail, there are screw, uh, co coaxial connection, uh, aerodynamic smoother, sealant, and antenna blade, okay, the detail. Okay, VHF antenna, okay, it has 720 channels from 118 MHz to 135.975 MHz, 25 kHz spacing, receiver disable during transmit, okay, uh, it's, it use push to talk to operate, PTT, and antenna is vertically polarized and omnidirectional. Scratch it disables the receiver output when no signals are being received, so preventing noise being fed to crew headsets between transmission. Okay, next. Okay, Collins VHF 20-20A block diagram. Okay, you see the buffer amplifier, RF amplifier mode, scene, TR switch reset mix to the mixer, IF. Amplifier detector, audio amplifier, and the the uh, the, the voice goes by. Okay. Okay. The antenna. Okay. In radio engineering, an antenna is interference between radio waves propagating through space and electric currents moving in metal conductors. Use it with a transmitter or receiver. 
Okay, next, a radio transmitter supplies an electric current to the antenna terminals and the antenna radiates the energy from the current as electromagnetic wave, radio waves. And in reception, an antenna intercepts some of the power of radio wave in order to produce an electric current at its terminal that is supplied to a receiver to be amplified. Antenna are designed to transmit and receive radio waves. Okay, that's all from me. Uh, the presentation will continue with Ms. Mr. Johan. Okay, thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum. Okay. okay. Hi, my name is Muhammad Janis bin Abdullah. I'm going to present about the aircraft navigation system. So the first one is about the automatic direction finder, ADF. It is an aid, an electronic aid to navigation that identifies the relative bearing of an aircraft from a radio beacon transmitting in the low frequency to the medium frequency bandwidth. So the concept is uh, a, it's a ground-based radio trans ground-based radio. Transmitter sends a uh, omnidirectional signal to an aircraft loop antenna. Then the result is a cockpit instrument, which is the ADF, that displays the aircraft position relative to the uh, ground station, allowing the, a pilot to home to a station or track a course from a station. ADF consists of a loop aerial which is rotated physically or electronically and detects the direction of minimum reception from the beacon relative to the aircraft direction. It receives low and medium frequency radio wave from ground base station. Can receive ADF can receive on both uh, amplitude magnetic radio station and non-directional beacon. ADF is a radio signal in the low to medium frequency band of 190 kHz to 1750 kHz. Okay, basically ADF component consists of four components which is ADF receiver, antenna, um, control box, bearing indicator. Okay, first ADF receiver. Pilot can tune the station desire and to select the mode of operation. Um, to navigate using the ADF, the pilot tunes the receiving equipment to a ground station known as uh, NBD, which is mean um, non-directional beacon. Usually, ADF receiver have two system, ADF one and ADF two. When tuned to two distinct station or beacons, will automatically drive two pointers on radio magnetic indicator RMI so that each pointer gave the bearing of the corresponding station. Picture on the right side is the how radio magnetic indicator RMI looks like. Amplitude magnetic signal is received, amplified and convert to audible voice or Morse code transmission and power the powers the bearing indicator. Receiver band for the ADF receiver is from 100 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz. Next is antenna. Antenna for ADF component consists of two antennas. First loop antenna and second one sense antenna. Loop antenna is to determine is to determine the strength of the signal it received from the ground station to determine the direction of the station. 
uh, sense antenna to determine whether the aircraft is moving toward or away from the station. Next, control box. Most modern aircraft use digital readout type of control box in the cockpit. In this equipment, the frequency tune is displayed as digital readout. ADF automatically determines bearing to selected station and it on the radio magnetic indicator. Next, bearing indicator. Displays the bearing to station relative to the nose of the aircraft. Maybe picture on the right side, the above part is the is how the bearing indicator looks like. Okay. Okay. Next is a uh, very high frequency omnidirectional range, VOR. VOR is a navigation system that uses radio transmission between a beacon on the ground and an instrument on an aircraft. VOR is a type of short range radio navigation system for aircraft. The signals are line of sight between transmitter and receiver and are useful for up to 200 months only. The, this navigation system provides magnetic bearing data from a VOR ground station to, uh, to the airplane. VOR enables aircraft to determine their position, stay on course by receiving radio signals emitted by a network of radio beacons. VOR operates in the very high frequency range of 108 to 118 MHz. Next is, okay, next is how VOR works. Every VOR is oriented to magnetic north and admit 360 radius from the station. The VOR sends out the stationary master signal and one rotating variable signal, which also call reference and variable faces. An aircraft VOR antenna, which is usually located on the tail, pick up the signal and transfer it to the receiver in the cockpit. So the signal will be going go to the tail of the aircraft which is the antenna and then it will transfer to the receiver at the cockpit. Okay. The aircraft VOR receiver compares the difference between the VOR variable and reference faces and determines the aircraft bearing from the station. Okay, now is distance measuring equipment, DME. So, DME is a radio navigation technology that measures the distance between aircraft and ground station. The function of DME is to enable aircraft to measure their position relative to that beacon. It provides the pilot of slang range between an aircraft and a ground station readout by measuring time lapse of a signal transmitted by the aircraft to the station and respond back. The ME operates in the ultra high frequency of 960 MHz to 1213 MHz in accordance with ICAO and X10. DME can also provide ground speed and time to station readouts by different station. DME consists of an interrogator on board an aircraft and a DME station on the ground. Okay, the picture shows that uh, the aircraft interrogate the DME, then interrogate, then the DME station in replies back to the aircraft, which is to know the slant range. Okay, interrogator. 
The aircraft interrogates the DME ground station with a pulse signal and the station replies back to the airplane. The time difference between transmission and reception is used to calculate the distance from the aircraft to the DME station. Because the, dis because the interrogation is repeated, the information can also be used to calculate the ground speed. Transmits, transmits signal on a center frequency of 1025 up to 1150 MHz. 126 frequencies in the bandwidth with 1 MHz spacing defined. So, now reply. The DME ground station replies to interrogation frequency that is below or above 63 MHz. DME have 252 channels which are separated by 1 MHz. There are 126 X channel and 126 Y channel. The ground station is identified by most three or four letter coded tone modulated at 1350 Hz. Now moving on to instrument landing system, ILS. Um, ILS is a system that works by sending radio wave downrange from the runway end with aircraft that intercept it using the radio wave to guide them onto the runway. So uh, ILS is to provide precision lateral and vertical guidance to an aircraft approaching and landing on a runway. Use IRS use a combination of radio signal to enable uh, safe landing even during challenging conditions such as low visibility. This we this we so this statement explained that the pilot will disengage autopilot mode and carry the aircraft manually because of the challenging condition. Then, ILS consists of two independent subsystems, which is localizer and glide, scope, glide slope. Localizer is to provide lateral guidance restricting the aircraft approaching a runway to shift laterally from the recommended path. Glide slope is to provide vertical guidance and hence restrict vertical deviation of the aircraft from the recommended path of descent. Okay, localizer. The localizer generates and radiates signals to provide final approach azimuth navigation information to landing aircraft. Localizer operates in the frequency band of 108 Point ten to hundred eleven point ninety five megahertz. The antenna sends a very high frequency carrier signal with ninety hertz and hundred fifty hertz sideband signals that the aircraft instrument determine as left and right of the center line. A total of 40 channels are provided by the IRS localizer system, each being paired with a possible glide slope channel. So the antenna sends the number three line is uh, shows that 90 hertz and 150 hertz. So it says that if the aircraft go, if the indicator shows to 90 hertz the aircraft will move to the right if the indicator shows the signal is 150 hertz the aircraft will be moved to the left i guess or it will be opposite um next is glide slope 
act in a similar manner as the localizer signal. Same as localizer signal, but it just turn 90 degrees on axis. Since a UHF, which is mean ultra high frequency carrier signal with the same 290 hertz and 150 hertz sideband frequencies that aircraft instruments determine as above or below the desired glide path. Operates in the frequency band of 328.6 to 335.4 megahertz. A total of channel are provided in the uh, frequency band of 3328.6 and 335.4 MHz band. Each is paired with one of 40 ILS localizer channel. So this is the illustration of the ILS localizer and light slope emission. So as we can see here, the 90 years shows that the aircraft will be moved to the right and 150 years will make the aircraft go to the left. So to make the aircraft center when, uh, when landing in the runway, the indicator show, shows be, the center between 150 hertz and 90 hertz. Uh, then the glide slope. As we can see, the glide slope act same as the localizer, but it it just to show that the aircraft will be go above or below. Then we go, we move to the marker beacon. Um, a marker beacon usually in conjunction with instrument landing system. Marker beacon function is to give pilots a means to determine pos position along an established route to a destination such as a runway. A marker beacon is a VFR radio transmitter. VFR means visual flight. Um, wait, eh? Visual flight rules. Radio transmitter which radiates vertically a distinctive pattern for providing position information to aircraft. Marker beacon provides a light and a sound indication at a published distance from the runway threshold. Operates at a carrier frequency of 75 MHz. There are three types of marker beacons operate in the runway. First, outer marker, second, middle marker, and last, inner marker. So, the outer marker, oops, sorry. So the outer marker located four between four to seven nautical miles from the runway threshold normally indicates where an aircraft intercept the glide path when at the published altitude. Blue light flash indicate aircraft position over outer marker. The signal is modulated at a frequency 400 hertz. Continuous series of audio tone most good light dashes. So um, the picture at the left side shows the automaker indicator shows how the automaker indicator looks like. It will blue light blinking when the aircraft is over is positioned over the marker beacon. Next is middle marker. Uh, 3,500 eh, 3, feet from the runway threshold. It is located 3,500 3, feet from the runway threshold. In the decision height, 
point for a normal instrument landing system approach. On glide path at the middle marker, an aircraft will be approximately 200 feet above the runway. Amber light flashes indicate aircraft position over middle marker. The frequency of the identification tone is 1300 Hz. Repeating pattern of Oliver Morse code like dot dashes. So the middle marker will blinking amber lights in the indicator shows that the aircraft has passed over the, the upper middle marker indicator. Okay, the middle marker, the middle marker beacon. Next is the inner, inner marker. Located 1,000 feet from the runway threshold is the decision height point for a category 2 approach. So for the inner marker, for the inner marker indicator, white light flashes indicate aircraft position over inner marker. The inner marker emits an AM wave, which is amplitude magnetic wave with modulated frequency of 3000 Hz. A series audio tone dots. Um, uh, that's all from me. Uh, I will give next will be Mr. Muhammad Afi. Okay, my name is Muhammad Afi with Muhammad Aziz. Today, today I will talk about weather radar. Radar radar system is a type of radar used to provide an indication to pilot of intensity of convective radar. Signal from the antenna are processed by a computer and present on a screen which may be viewed by the pilot. This antenna basically located at the nose of the aircraft. The weather radar continues to update the navigation display approximately every 4 to 10 seconds in order to provide the crew system, the crew with information and process which is usual, usually full automatic. This is such as example of radar radar inside the cockpit. The black one is the background. The level one weather which is color green stand for the week and level 2 which is color yellow the wind is moderate level 3 color red the weather is strong to very strong and level 4 color magenta which is intense to extreme weather next is air traffic control atc the atc ground station interrogate the airborne atc system the atc transponder replies to the interrogant interrogation in the form of code information that the ground station use. The ATC transponder also replies to mode S interrogation from the system alert and collision avoidance system TCAS of other airplane or ground station. When a ground station or TCAS computer from another airplane interrogate the ATC system, the transponder transmit a pulse Code reply signal. The reply signal identifies and shows the altitude of the airplane. The two antennas transmit signal from the ATC transponder and send receive signal to the ATC transponder. This signal go through the ATC quark switch. The ATC or TCAS control panel send identification and control data to the transponder. The ATC or TCAS control panel also allows selection of either transponder 1 or transponder 2. This is such an example uh, ATC inside the cockpit. We got aircraft ID, altitude, destination, ground speed and aircraft type. Next is traffic collision avoidance system, TCAS. 
Tikas designed to reduce the incident of mid-air collision between aircraft. It fit to all aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass over 5,700 5, kg or authorized to carry more than 19 passengers. There is four main components of TCAS. First is receiver transmitter. Second is top directional antenna. Third is bottom omnidirectional antenna. And lastly, control panel. If two aircraft are equipped with TCAS, the system can communicate with each other using their mode as transponder. Aircraft are normally keep 1,000 feet vertically to provide sufficient safety margin. There are three versions of TCAS. TCAS 1, a very basic system which provides position advice of nearby aircraft only. TCAS 2 provides position advice and can give instruction to the pilot to ascend or descend in order to avoid probable collision. TCAS 2 is installed in many aircraft nowadays. TCAS 3 is for a further development which is provided later. How TCAS work? Surveillance sensor collects the information about the introduced aircraft, such as relative position and velocity, and pass the information to a set of algorithm to determine whether the collision trait exists. If a trait is identified, a second set of trait resolution uh, al algorithm determine an appropriate response. If the introduced aircraft also has TCAS, the response coordinated through a data link to ensure that each aircraft maneuver in a co compatible direction. Collision avoidance maneuver generate a display by TCAS are tracked as advisories to flight crew, who then take manual control of the aircraft and maneuver accordingly. This is such as example of TCAS. We got five symbol in here, which the triangle which stand for our own aircraft. The diamond color white or cyan is shown under traffic. The plus eleven stand for eleven thousand feet above or descending, and the yellow. One with the negative nine is 900 feet below and below our aircraft. And the red one is 500 feet below our aircraft. Next is tactical air navigation system, Tachan. Used in military aircraft only. Bearing and distance signal require only a signal transceiver on the ground and on the aircraft. They also use two small rotating drum with parasitic antenna element which help in increasing the radiation indirectly. It is a more accurate version of VOR DME system that provide bearing and range information. They also use UHF frequency to increase bearing determination accuracy. The signal frequency for range and bearing. This is such an example of Tachan. Next is Doppler navigation system. Doppler radar will use is will use as a navigation aid for aircraft and spacecraft. By directly measuring the movement of the ground with the radar and then the com and then comparing this to the airspeed return from the aircraft instrument. The wind speed could be accurately determined for the first time. This value was then used for highly accurate dead reckoning. reckoning sorry. The equipment consists of a transmitter receiver unit and processing unit and a gyro established antenna platform. The antenna generate four beam and was rotated by a servo mechanism to align with the aircraft track by equalizing the Doppler shift from the left and right hand antennas. A synchro transmit the platform angle to the flight deck 
thus providing a measure of drift angle. The ground speed was determined from the Doppler shift between the forward and aft facing beam. These were displayed on the flight deck on a single instrument. Some aircraft had an additional Doppler computer. This was a mechanical, mechanical device containing a steel ball rotated by a bonto whose speed was controlled by the Doppler determined ground speed. The angle of this motor was controlled by a drift angle. This is such an example of Doppler navigation system. The transmitter sent the signal to the earth surface and the signal bounced back and received by the receiver. Next is Inertial Navigation System, INS. This is an example of the INS system, which has gyro, accelerometer, motor and amplifier, and others. How does an INS actually work? An INS comprise two distinct parts. The first is the IMU, Initial Management Unit. The second part is the navigation computer, to continuously calculate by that recording the position, the orientation, and the velocity of moving object without need for external reference. So, as the INS rotates, the established platform inside it does not. In this way, the system learns about its orientation and makes use of the measurement from the astrometer. In contrast, the sensor inside strap down navigator, which is second part, do not move independently of the INS. This overcome many problems associated with established platform and is the main reason why INS are now affordable to a lot more people. That's all for me, uh, Muhammad Hafi. Thank you. Wait a bit.